Hi, Ray Bakerjin with the Wounded Artist Project, and today we're going to be talking to Lieutenant Colonel Mario Accardo of the Civil Air Patrol, the CAP, and Mario is going to tell us a little bit about uh, the mission and the history of the CAP and about some really interesting opportunities for pilots who volunteer to fly with this organization. Mario, Ray, thank you, thank you for joining us today, and uh, before we launch in and let uh, uh, Mario describe what, uh, what the CAP is all about, uh, again, uh, the Wounded Artist Project, we send art kits to war, wounded, recovering in military hospitals. Uh, that's our mission. But we also have a YouTube channel with some drawing videos and that kind of thing. Uh, but we also do these small videos as a public service uh, to encourage people to do community service or to let people know about other types of veterans affairs and veterans uh, activities, that kind of thing. Uh, but uh, enough about us. Uh, Mario, why don't you give us some history and a little bit about your mission, actually, in the Civil Air Patrol, and, and then uh, probably tell us where are we right now. So, go ahead. The Civil Air Patrol was established in 1941. It was in response to the, third, the German threats to our shorelines on the East Coast. Uh, our mission at the time, among other things, was to patrol the coastline and provide support for the U.S. Navy and Coast Guard. And then at a later time, we actually armed the aircraft and with depth charges and bombs, and even got credit for a couple of U-boat kills. It was uh, a very interesting time during the Second World War for the civilians in the United States. But as we grew, grew out of the Second World War, uh, the Second World War, we've um, changed our mission. A couple things happened actually. Congress had, made, had established the Civil Air Patrol as the official auxiliary of the United States Air Force. They also established us as a nonprofit civilian component. That's important to understand because we are not the Air Force. We are a civilian organization of volunteers. Today's mission is actually broken down into three components. We fly uh, search and rescue, disaster relief, so we call that emergency services. We also support a cadet program, somewhat like the Boy Scouts, but very different. It's co-ed, actually. It's more like the Scouts, but different. Our third mission is aerospace education, and that, that is to say, uh, actually, the 21st century term for that is STEM, right? Science, oh. Technology, uh, Engineering, and Math. Uh, the Civil Air Patrol's Aerospace Education Program it has been a STEM kind of program for many years, since we've been incorporated in 1946. Okay, and uh, what is your unit here? What, uh, where are we? We're at... Uh, well, we're at Metatol Airport. But in Plymouth, Michigan. In, in Plymouth, Michigan. But our, the squadron I belong to, actually, is the Livonia Thunderbolt composite squadron. But that's one of about 40 squadrons in the state of Michigan. So the way the Civil Air Patrol is organized is it's a national organization. We are about 60,000 people, members. Uh, of the 60,000, there are about, uh, I, I want to say about 20,000 uh, young adults as cadets. Mm -hmm. And we also have about, about 5,000 pilots. That organization is spread across the United States. Every state is called a wing. So we're in the Michigan wing. Ah, okay. And in the Michigan wing, we have, uh, we break them down into groups, there are about six groups in Michigan, and I happen to be the deputy commander for Group 705, which represents the southeast corner of Michigan, uh, from Wayne County, Monroe County, and, uh, and Washtenaw County. The, uh, when you break down the groups, we actually have five squadrons in this area. So there's Livonia Thunderbolt, we have also Ann Arbor, uh, the Kevin Adams Memorial Squadron in Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, the M Monroe Composite Squadron in Monroe, Michigan, and then we have one more. It's uh, the Willow Run Composite Squadron over at Willow Run Airport. Uh, so this airplane is here to serve all of us, all of our membership, but it's only it's one of 11 aircraft that we have in Michigan. The other aircraft are based in Pontiac. We have uh, a Cessna 182 with a glass cockpit, G1000. This here is a Cessna 172 with a glass cockpit, and it's based here at Metatol. Mm -hmm. And at uh, Ann Arbor, we have what's called the Gippsland GA-8. It's a large aircraft. It, it, it kind of looks like a caravan, but it's a, it's a mm. piston engine airplane, about right. 300 horsepower. It's a heavy lift airplane. It's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Monroe, we have a, a classic steam gauge 172. Mm. Okay. And what is your day job, by the way? You're a volunteer here. You know? Right. We're, we're all volunteers. Uh, we have a very small paid staff. Uh, I think we have uh, two paid mem one paid member here in Michigan, the Air Force Reserve, uh, have a position where they where they oversee the Civil Air Patrol, so they have, they have scattered Air, Air Force Reservists around the country, but the rest of us are volunteers. And me in particular, I work at Ford Motor Company. I work 50 to 60 hours a week, just like a typical person at Ford mm. Motor Company, wow. and uh, and I and this this is what I do in my spare time. Uh, my wife and family support this. 
I put in about anywhere from as little as five hours a week to as much as 10 hours a week. And, and uh, for certain missions, I, I actually go away. I spend my vacation time. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, now, I, I've heard somewhere that uh, the cadets are actually, we're not going to really kind of detour way off on that, but I'd heard that uh, the cadets here get some really exciting uh, encampments. Um, they sure do. We have several encampment opportunities. And an encampment in the Civil Air Patrol is, is the same thing as saying uh, like a, a, a sleepaway camp, right? So uh, these are one-week uh, activities. Uh, they don't cost very much. Uh, they, they're, you know, in the order of maybe $300, but it depends on the encampment. We have, for example, uh, up in Alpena. We spend a week up in Alpena where cadets learn uh, all the details about being in the Civil Air Patrol, wearing a, the Air Force uniform, a little bit of drill and ceremony, well, a lot of bit of drill and ceremony. Um, they do physical fitness. Uh, they go on orientation flights in both airplane and gliders, mm. and uh, they do other um, other outdoor activities uh, that that have a military uh, flair to it, so right. to speak. Uh, nothing heavy duty, but things that are just simply exciting. Yeah. They also have an air, aerospace education component. Typically, we run a model rocketry course, a, a multi-day course on building a model rocket mm. and shooting the model rocket. Mm. Uh, but that's the basic encampment. Then we have other encampments. We have uh, what's called the Pararescue uh, Operations Center. They have a uh, PJOC. They, have, uh, uh, they bring cadets in for a week. It's an Air Force installation where para-jumpers are trained. And, oh. the, and the cadets actually participate in the training. They don't actually jump out of the helicopters or anything like that, but, but it's just to give them insight in that environment. Right. Uh, we have encampments that take them to, um, for example, Frontier Airlines that sponsored encampments year after year. And, and, and I akin that to being um, like an internship. So our cadets would go in and mm -hmm. actually participate in uh, ground operations, uh, passenger operations, uh, areas of the air, of airport operations, so they have insight into the airline industry. Right. And I thought I'd heard something about a combat controller course. That was... Uh that, that looked like those kids were actually going to, I think, Fort Benning or something like that. Yep. And did everything but jump out of the airplane with a parachute. Every, every year, uh, we come up with another really cool encampment. Now, who comes up with this? Volunteers across the nation. We, yeah. Most of our volunteers, we all civilian, many of them, but not, not all of us. I don't have a military background myself, but others who do, they use their connections and network, and they develop these really interesting programs, not just for cadets, but for adults as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, because I was... You know, thinking with that kind of thing, your, your typical cadet then isn't really what, uh, you know, it's not your geeks and sissies that people think they are. You know, no, you do these really kind of exciting things. It's a, it's a great opportunity it, for kids as well as, as the pilots. So. It is very exciting. Um, it's, it's hard. It's so different. It's, it's hard to convince young kids. You know, when I show a cadet or I talk about it, it's very hard to convince them. Uh, the easiest way nowadays is just point them to YouTube. You know, yeah. and, and I'm not sure if you if you search or Google Civil Air Patrol encampments, you will come up with a whole bunch of uh, video clips and uh, and still photos of what's going on in Civil Air Patrol. It, it really is different. It's unique, and and it's accessible. Uh, e even if if the cost is out of reach of some of the cadets, most squadrons, most units, they have some form of scholarship because they do fund rating raisings locally, mm -hmm. and so they'll they'll have some money and they'll they'll try to subsidize the cost a little yeah. bit. That's good. Can you tell us a little bit about your own flying background? I mean, you mentioned that your family was very supportive, which is very good. Uh, how did you start out with the Civil Air Patrol? What was your, what was your progression? For me, uh, I, I would think about 20% of our membership are cadet, former cadets. And I was a former cadet. I joined when I was about 14 in high school, mm. junior high. And uh, I always wanted to be a pilot. Uh, the military route really wasn't for me. Uh, I wanted to be a pilot, but I also wanted, I, I enjoyed science and technology, so I ended up becoming an engineer. Oh, okay. um, as most people, most pilots out there know, uh, it's hard to become a pilot when you're really young, right? So you go into the military route. Uh, in the Civil Air Patrol, when I joined, the, the lure was wearing a uniform, being associated with the Air Force, and, and having an opportunity to fly airplanes. And, and I did. As a cadet, years, we're talking 30 years ago, uh, I had opportunities to fly half-hour flights with pilots, mm -hmm. and they would show me how to fly the airplane. I'd, I'd take the controls, I'd fly the airplane. It wasn't flight instruction, it was just simply familiarization. Yeah. And um, as long as, it, and these were funded, and uh, as long as somebody was funded in the front seat, the cadets were welcome to go in the back seat for the ride. So, oh. so I got quite a bit of flying right. as a cadet. Okay. But uh, going through college and getting my degree in engineering, obviously I, I didn't have the money or the wherewithal to go learn to fly, and that didn't happen until I settled down at Ford Motor Company. Mm -hmm. So I had a job, and I had uh, time, and put those together, and 
you can go out and get your license. So mm -hmm. I actually ended up learning to fly about 20 years ago in 96. And uh, being a continuous member of Civil Air Patrol, I knew that I could use my flying skills right away. Right. So as soon as I became a private pilot, uh, I, I got a check ride. I qualified in the Civil Air Patrol airplane at the time, but will it run? And then I slowly built hours in the Civil Air Patrol, mm -hmm. growing my time. I joined flying clubs along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, I did travel quite a bit. We relocated several times. And every time I relocated, I, I connected myself with the, the Civil Air Patrol unit that was in, in, in this case in Cincinnati. Mm -hmm. um, and I connected with one in Virginia. And uh, when I do that, it, it's to, again, be part of that organization. It's, it's almost seamless where you walk in, you're, you walk in with rank and experience. That doesn't go away. It's a nationwide organization. Right. And you can almost pick up where you left off. Okay. So. Um, most of my flight hours are Civil Air Patrol hours. I have about 1,500, uh, 1,550, roughly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say about 1,000 hours of Civil Air Patrol and the other 500 hours of personal flying, right. renting airplanes or a club or, or obviously flight training. Right. Uh, my primary and my instrument training and my commercial training, well, I, I beg your pardon, my primary and instrument training were done outside Civil Air Patrol. Mm -hmm. My commercial training was done using Civil Air Patrol aircraft with a Civil Air Patrol flight instructor. Oh, so, okay. so that kind of offset the cost a little bit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, um, when you do a commercial rating, you actually need uh, an aircraft that we don't have in inventory. So, right. But it just offsets the cost. Okay. And, and in terms of missions that you've actually flown, what types of, what, what, what are the missions that stand out to you? And if you were to talk, if I was a private pilot standing here next to the airplane, and uh, you know, Mario, you're saying, Ray, you got to come and join us. This is, this is the kind of stuff you're going to do. What, what can you offer up these uh, people that are watching this right now? Well, we have several mission profiles. We have quite a few, and, and I'll, I'll just rattle them down the list a little bit, and then I'll tell you a little bit about what I've done. Um, we've, we look for ELTs, emergency located transmitters, and that's the uh, component inside the aircraft that would stick, sound off if an airplane crashed or if it went missing and a pilot can turn on this beacon. And uh, we're equipped to go find the analog and the digital version of that beacon. So that's a very, uh, very prominent mission profile we've been doing for many years. Mm -hmm. Uh, the mission profile that's going on, that's gaining uh, traction and becoming more and more prevalent with today's uh, uh, weather and disasters is just damage assessment. So uh, essentially aerial photography on demand. The, uh, another uh, mission profile we have, uh, we fly, we do orientation flights for cadets <coughs> and for the Air Force ROTC cadets hmm. and, and uh, junior ROTC cadets. We do have a junior ROTC um, uh, detachment here in Oh, okay. And we also have, uh, University of Michigan has an Air Force ROTC detachment as well. Right. And we support those cadets. Again, orientation, familiarization rise. Mm -hmm. uh, we also fly teachers. If um, teachers can join the Civil Air Patrol as, a, as, a, as an aerospace education member, hmm. and it's a one-time fee, but they have access to all this material, as well as an orientation flight to help them learn what aviation is about and how to bring that into the classroom. Right. So when I think back... <laughs> In my 20 years, I, I've been flying 20 years now, mm. and I think the most exciting uh, and most uh, rewarding events, uh, if you remember in 2010, the, um, uh, the, the BP oil rig that exploded, right. Deepwater Horizon, right. that was uh, a natural disaster where uh, not only the Air Force and the Navy were involved, but they involved in the Coast Guard, but they also called up the Civil Air Patrol. Mm. And in that mission, uh, it's, that mission ran from, uh, I want to say, April all the way into September. Yeah. And, and, the, and the people in the Civil Air Patrol who are manning that mission are the residents, you know, the volunteers that live in, in the coastal regions, mm -hmm. right, in, that, uh, in the Gulf region. So members from Mississippi all the way to, to Florida uh, were involved. But we have our limitations, right? We, not, just, not just in the pilot realm, not just in the realm of air crews, but we also run our missions. We manage our missions. We manage them for the Air Force, we manage them for the Coast Guard. <clears throat> and when we, when we cycle through these very long duration missions, um, our people have to go back to work or, they, or they're simply fatigued. So we need replacements. And what we do typically, and we've done this several times, is we'll call in uh, members from other states, other mm -hmm. wings. Because our training is standard, yeah. members in Michigan deploy to, uh, in this case, Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, so fly right in. So we've, we literally, I took a, a week's vacation at Ford Motor Company, I took a week <laughs> off, and my wife said, go, go for it, and, mm -hmm. uh, and I flew, what was about seven and a half hours down the Mobile with, with a mission command crew, uh, mm -hmm. mission command team, and uh, we installed ourselves, and then uh, I was actually supposed to just 
hang out, but in reality what happened was um, I was able to back up some of the aircraft and air crews, and oh. I, ended up, I ended up flying quite a bit that, that was about a 40-hour flight week. I flew 40 hours that week. That's yeah. a lot. It, yeah, it was a lot. It was a lot, but um, again, very memorable. Um, I got to work with people from the entire southeast area of the country, mm -hmm. uh, different state agencies. Uh, we delivered, well, I did a few things. We delivered photography, uh, aerial assessments. We gave that to uh, an agency that processed photography. We also uh, provided transport of special equipment, and we, ha and we transported uh, personnel like a... Uh, um, state officials who needed to see with their own eyes some of the assessment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, another memorable mission, I flew air, air uh, for air defense, we fly intercept missions. Really? Yes. It's very, uh, <clears throat> it's a lot of fun. I think it's, it's got the big cool factor to it, but it is really rewarding because uh, our military personnel, they're flying high tech, very fast equipment, and they're not accustomed to intercepting airplanes. Them. Right, yeah. yeah. In, in the vernacular for the airmen, it's <laughs> the equipment. Yeah. So their, their airplanes, their aircraft, are we're talking the F-15s, F-16s. And, um, and, and it's no secret that the Air Force has what we call NORAD, and, and we do, uh, they intercept uh, targets that um, are supposedly in, infiltrating. And sometimes mm -hmm. uh, you hear every once in a while someone is meandering their way through uh, Washington, D.C.'s airspace, right? Those restricted are, those are yeah. restricted zones. So we help the Air Force by qualifying their their uh, crews and their pilots mm. in doing these slow flight intercepts. Wow. Yeah. Would you, you ever see any other Air Force equipment? <laughs> <laughs> so quite a bit. Typically around here with the F-16s do the intercepts. And uh, so we'll, we'll send up our, our aircraft and we'll go out on a specific pass and the Air Force will try and chase us down. They have to find us and chase us down, intercept us, and then guide us to a local field. And, and that's not easy. So, so we serve, we help our Air Force uh, by providing them this service as being the target. And then <laughs> it helps them qualify. You never hear tone or anything. No, no, I don't hear tone. No, we don't have that kind of equipment. That's good. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's really exciting. I and, bet. Um, and we do other, we have other uh, interactions with the military of that nature that's quite interesting. Uh, I'm not qualified in any of those, but uh, if you go out west, it, it gets a little more exciting. Mm, okay. um, we also, I've been on several missing persons searches, mm. and I've been on a couple, uh, I was on an ELT search once where um, you would have thought a tornado went through the whole airport, but actually it was uh, horizontal winds up in, uh, mm. up in Saginaw area, mm -hmm. and aircrafts were all flipped on their backs, and one of the aircraft had an ELT that went off, oh. and, and it was one of those where we flew about 180 miles north to locate the ELT, and sure enough, it was at this airport where it was devastated by, by winds. Oh. Yeah, it was about, I think it was like 2009. Hmm. And, uh, and that was the first time I, I, was, I was amongst a ruined aircraft. You know, mm. It was really surreal. Yeah, uh, it must no, be sad. It, yeah, to see a lot of old airplanes on their backs and mm. twisted. But um, I've never, fortunately, been in a position where I've, uh, I've been on a, an actual life and death situation oh, okay. uh, searching people. Yet. Well, no, not yet. But but that's the point. Right. Right. We train for that and we assume nothing. We we assume one thing and that is that the, the missions are real. So when there is a an air uh, if there's a, a call for an overdue airplane and they ask us to go find it, we we know if it's mm -hmm. overdue, it's a real mission. Mm -hmm. uh, with lost persons, we had hikers that were lost for a few days up in the UP mm -hmm. and we did find them. So we, we have, we're, we are successful at what we do, but we do it because we train, we train hard, we train well, and, um, and, do, and, and that's the kind of organization we are. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I, I started off our, our little talk here today with uh, describing that uh, you know, pilots, can, they're welcome to join. Um, why don't you describe what you're looking for and how a pilot might benefit, uh, not only themselves, but you know, what, what's in it for a pilot to come to civil or to see you? A CAP is uh, first and foremost a search and rescue organization. I mean, we serve the emergency services, we provide emergency services, we serve our community at large. Um, pilots are an instrumental part of that. So it, we are looking for pilots who aren't super people, but simply ordinary, skilled uh, pilots who enjoy aviation, who want to share it, and also who want to serve their country. Um, the commitment. <laughs> The commitment to civil air patrol isn't overwhelming, it's just how you want to balance it out. So uh, when it comes to qualifications, simply uh, a private pilot who's VFR uh, can participate, can join, and uh, grow with us. They can get their instrument rating if they like, but they can also 
be an effective member as, an, as a VFR pilot because, like I said, we uh, provide orientation flights uh, to teachers and cadets and ROTC cadets, and, and we do have transportation flights, and, and, and even as a mission pilot, those are all, most of those, those things are done in visual conditions, mm -hmm. excuse me, VFR conditions. But uh, some of our profiles require a commercial rating because even though we operate as a, as a private, nonprofit entity, uh, there are things that we do that the FAA requires us to operate in a commercial sense. So, yeah. so we, don't, we don't operate under the commercial regulations, but we have some special arrangements, uh, some exemptions, but those exemptions require at least a, a commercial rating. Yeah, so okay. if, I'm, if I'm transporting people who are not members of the Civil Air Patrol or members of the military, or if I'm transporting uh, medicines or blood, those things don't belong to the Civil Air Patrol. For those missions, we require a commercial rating. Mm -hmm. But if you look back at my path, uh, I joined, I was a cadet, but to set that aside, I was able to grow into the Civil Air Patrol over the years by balancing my time and balancing my schedule to uh, take on the additional ratings with, with some help from my friends in Civil Air Patrol, in other words, using the aircraft in that regard. Um, it's not a flying club, so it, it, we're not looking for people who want to join and then just to fly, right? Because um, the aircraft are here to support America, mm -hmm. to support the taxpayers, to support the victims of, of floods and hurricanes and, and missing aircraft. So mm -hmm. um, it's kind of a blend, it's a balance, right? right. And uh, what kind of a pilot? A pilot who's energetic, a pilot who, if, if they want to come, if they want to return to flying, maybe they took time off from flying, mm -hmm. uh, this would be a good way to go because our training is very structured. And we are very in tune with the FAA, and uh, we're very in tune with the flight instruction community. Uh, very, very well structured mm -hmm. and, and quite disciplined. If you're not in, if, if you're not into a disciplined, structured environment, maybe the civil air is not for you. Right. But uh, if you look at some of the profiles that we fly, and, and I welcome you to Google uh, civil air patrol flight profiles, mission profiles, those keywords, you'll see some of the things that we do. And you'll understand why it requires a level of discipline mm -hmm. and a level of commitment. Okay. Are there people that actually come here maybe to get flying in order to build up hours to maybe go to the airlines? That, that, that is absolutely doable. Uh, the trade-off is simply to commit yourself to our missions. So, as, as I said earlier, uh, I joined the Civil Air Patrol when I was young. I got my certificate outside the Civil Air Patrol. And then I grew into the Civil Air Patrol and I, and I built my hours. Um, we, we, have, we have so many mission profiles and, and so much funded activity that we, are with, we don't have enough pilots to fulfill them. Okay, uh, for example, uh, we flew about 2,200 hours last year just in Michigan, uh, but there are enough flight opportunities to bring that number all the way up to about 3,000, 4,000 hours. Oh. We, we just don't have enough pilots to fulfill it. So if you're a young pilot or, you know what, I strike that. It's not about being a young pilot, it's about being a low-time pilot. If you're a low-time pilot and uh, you would like to fly for more than that $200 hamburger, then by all means, stop by your local Civil Air Patrol unit and ask them about opportunities of flying our aircraft because of our mission profiles will just inherently get you to build your time. Mm -hmm. and, and building your time is, you know, it can be done by training for these uh, mission profiles. <coughs> By the time you're done training for these mission profiles, you'll have a couple hundred hours under your belt. Mm. Um, you can fly as much as 150 hours a year, if you want, flying these aircraft. Mm -hmm. Now, again, if, if you're on a career path to the airlines, um, getting that time can be done as a flight instructor. There are other ways to do it, but this is a great way to supplement that time building. Mm -hmm. It certainly is. Um, and it's a wet airplane. Yes, uh, yeah, you can look up our rates, but I, I can rattle them off real quick. Uh, this airplane here, it flies for uh, $40 an hour dry. All right, and this, that's only good for this year. Next year it might change. Mm -hmm. But our 182, they, they fly for $45 an hour dry. Right? And, then, and gas prices in the Michigan area are roughly 5 bucks a gallon. So you're looking at under $100 an hour if, when, you're, when you're flying these aircraft. We're a low-cost solution, <laughs> really, right. for yeah. the Air Force. Right. And, and for any municipality, in lieu of a, hel of a helicopter that's, that's $300 or $400 an hour, Right. You know, they deploy us. So if, if a member wants to um, build time and that time building is uh, outside mission uh, capabilities, uh, that's the proficiency flying, they can certainly do that um, on their own. Now, recently, for those who do qualify, the proficiency hours that are required to stay sharp 
are being funded. So when you look oh, at excellent, yes, it's it, it's actually a, a wonderful turn of events because when I was younger, I had to pay out a lot of money to to fly these aircraft mm -hmm. on my own to train and to keep qualified. And over the years, it becomes it becomes financially difficult, especially since my, my children are off to college, and uh, and a lot of other. Uh, young pilots, new pilots, when they come in, they're flying low-powered airplanes. So they're flying airplanes that are below the capability of a 172 nowadays. They're flying light sport aircraft, mm -hmm. uh, lower horsepower, and sometimes lower technology. So um, our leadership team at the Civil Air Patrol has uh, discussed these issues with the Air Force, and the Air Force has agreed to provide some funding now for proficiency hours and for training. So most of our training, I can say with some certainty that our training is fully funded. I uh, can't promise that in years to yeah, come, right. but, but since 9-11, we've shifted from just search and rescue to more damage assessment and, and some interesting equipment that we have on board to do that damage assessment. So it requires more and more proficiency flying, mm -hmm. and, and that becomes difficult to do. So uh, there is funded flying. There's <coughs> funded proficiency flying. There are, uh, all, all these uh, orientation flights I mentioned earlier, those are all funded. Mm -hmm. and, and those are the activities that I think a, a, a pilot who's coming in, who's uh, got just a few hundred hours under their belt, these are the fun activities. These are the yeah. worthwhile you know, activities that are really re they're rewarding. Yeah, because it's not, not just boring hole, holes in the sky. You're so. right. It's not just boring holes in the sky. Mm -hmm. and, and, that's, and quite frankly, that's why I chose to stay in the Civil Air Patrol because uh, my flight instructor told me the, uh, when I got my license, so what are you going to do? You, you know, are you going to start building hours and going to the airlines? I'm like, no, no, uh, i got a great life. I, I work at a good company, and the Civil Air Patrol needs me, and they need my services as a pilot. Hmm. And I found myself in some of the great flying I've, I never dreamed of, all for the Civil Air Patrol. Right, right. Some of the great, the best flying I, I could have ever thought could come my way. No, that's excellent. No, it's a lot of fun. It's very rewarding. Well, uh, Mario, I think we checked all the boxes and what I wanted to ask you about, and uh, I, you know, you've given us some really great detail and some real good insight. Uh, the F-16, F-15 intercept, I, I'm just, mar I marvel at that, so. That's a lot of fun. Um, but uh, anyway, Mario, thank you very much for your time. Well, thank you for having me, and if, if, you, if anyone out there is really interested in Civil Air Patrol, I suggest you simply Google or search Civil Air Patrol. Uh, you could search Mission pro Profiles and you will find the documents that describe our profiles. And uh, I'm sure there are dozens of YouTube videos out there <laughs> that you could look at and, uh, and see what kind of things we do. For not just for adults, uh, not just for pilots, but also for young adults in America's Navy. Oh, well, great, great, great. Thank you, again, thank you very much. No, for thank you, sir. And uh, again, this is Ray Bakerton for the Wounded Arts Project with uh, Mario Cardo, Lieutenant Colonel. And uh, thank you very much, and take care.